Access to care, super important. Uh, most Americans, as I said earlier, have not seen a dentist. Uh, there's cost, there's lack of insurance, there's COVID concerns, they're ending now, but still they were last year, dental anxiety, and much more. And why do I say this? Is because we as dentistry need to do a better job at getting people to understand the importance of getting dental care, right? And we haven't done a good job, right? And access to, and, and we need to make a better job at not only getting them to be aware of it, we need to do a better job of convincing them that it's affordable, and it's affordable if you treat it correctly to take action on, on the right basis. I, things only get worse in the mouth. Right. They don't get better. So, so that is where I want to kind of frame this discussion in terms of these are the challenges. This is what we need to really think about and, and, and really design our, our campaigns or, or, or really have new respect for what I call is the patient journey, right? Is, is really how are, you, how are you getting the patients into what we in marketing call the funnel? And how does that patient go through the entire funnel? And, and come out successfully. And what does that come out successfully means? That they have accepted the treatment, they have gotten the treatment, they have paid for the treatment, and they have referred friends and family. That's what success means, right? Success doesn't mean you have a beautiful website. Success doesn't mean you have beautiful reviews. Success doesn't mean you have, uh, you're, uh, you're scheduling a patient. Success means all of those things, right? All the things that we're, we're, we're defining as success is we want to make sure that Every time we touch a dental patient, whether it's human, through our website, through our phone, ads, whatever that might be, that interaction is absolutely perfect. Because if it's not, the patient's going to stop you know, right in their tracks and not move forward. Right? So uh, I'll let you ask a question about that, and then I'll, I'll move forward. Well, well, Mal, I was going to make a comment that uh, you know we talk a lot about to our clients of uh, the difference between working in the business and on the business, and very clearly in dentistry, working in the business is pretty much in the chair. And I think that's you know that's the point where most most doctors want to spend a lot of their time in training and education. It is it maybe it is the first place they should spend, but a lot of them stop there, and they've got the patient in the chair, and they're they're focused on now what they have to deliver, but they have no idea how the patient truly got there and that working on the business and, and seeing all of the front office process, you know, and understanding that uh, and seeing it firsthand, hearing the calls, that's the part that most private practitioners miss out on. And I think a major reason why they can't compete. That's absolutely right. I mean, one of the, I have the luxury of spending a lot of time in, in, in the DSO world. And, 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 and one of the things that they have figured out well, they haven't figured out everything well. And one of the things they figured out well is complete visibility into the patient journey, right? They know exactly what patient searched what, landed where, what review did they see, what ad did they see, what video did they see, when did they call, how the call was answered, whether they showed up or not, how were they uh, welcomed into the practice by the front office, by the assistant, by the hygienist how the handoff from hygienist to doctor was, from doctor to treatment coordinator was, they have complete visibility into this entire funnel. And, and believe me, you don't have to be a large organization to have that. You can be a single office. When you have visibility into this, into, this, in, into this whole funnel, into this whole journey of the patient, you know exactly, oh my God, you know, uh, we, we, we are really good at attracting patients. We're not good at scheduling them into appointments. Well, maybe we're good at scheduling them into appointments, but we're really not good at confirming their appointments so they actually show up. Well, if, we, if they show up, maybe we're good at showing, maybe we're good at that, but, but when, when we welcomed in the office, they don't really feel, they feel rushed right, by the assistant, by the hygienist, and we, we can develop trust. So, so it's important to find out because Today, more so than ever, the sophistication of marketing is just beyond anybody's imagination. Um, so, so long story short, it's important as you guys think about marketing in 2022 and beyond, you want to think about what type of patients you want to see. Then think about, are you getting those type of patients to call you? Okay? 
what does it cost to, to, to make the phone ring? And then what happens afterwards? Right? Uh, have a, a document, have something that maps all that. And then once you get that, I mean, nobody wants to be bad at anything, but the problem is of measurement, just like we in the CPA world. If you don't measure something, you just can't manage it, and that's Drucker, not me. Right. Um, you've got to be able to manage and measure the process, measure everything that's not measured, and then and then and move on forward. I think another thing that you've said now more than once so far is this uh, customer acquisition cost, and it's something we talk with about every doctor, but I don't think they take it as seriously enough. It's not something they're uh, devoted to really tracking. They don't they don't understand the value of knowing that that cost. I mean, if you Watch the show Shark Tank. If you don't know right. your customer acquisition costs, you're you're out. You're out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that number uh, is is vital to the entire process of knowing how much do you have to spend, where to spend it, okay. and, and then making sure again what what converts. So I know you have more on that in, in the slide. Yeah, it's really important to know because you you want to be able to pull the the lever, right? Turn it up or down depending on how good the month is going. Right. That's where you want to get to. You want to make this into a science. You want to make patient acquisition to sign. You know exactly what lever to pull where so that you can drive the right customer into the right chair at the right time so your production per hour is the right optimal place for your hygienist as well as the doctor. It really, really, you have to completely get that from beginning to end. When you get that, uh, you're going to succeed, right? Obviously, you have to deploy analytics and, 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 and all these things. You have to really understand uh, how that works. But... The moment you have visibility into this stuff, you're going to do really, really well. Uh, so so I would next, what I would talk about next is really the idea of where AI fits in here. Right? AI is, in, 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 and obviously we've, um, we've looked at AI right now on a daily basis when we talk to Alexa, we talk to Siri or Google Assistant. What that technology is defined as natural language processing. It's the ability, it's a field of AI that allows the machines to understand what humans are talking about. Okay? So when we started Journey in Patient Prism, we, I asked the question, and I was not a technical guy right at the time. I was a CPA. And I said, I wonder, we're, we're seeing a drop off 50%. Could we train Alexa to understand dentistry? That was the question we asked. I had no idea about any of this stuff, right? No idea. And um, lo and behold, five patents later, uh, we realized that we had built the world's first AI, a, 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 a deep AI system that really understood dental conversations. I think it's important the analogy you just gave because I think even when I saw you speak in maybe your first year of business and you were even speaking on the concept of artificial intelligence, and the unknown, everyone was kind of like, what is this? What does this mean? But I think, I think everyone can understand in today's world with Alexa and Siri and all of that, now what we're talking about. Yeah. And you saw it early on, and that now it's catching up. So. And we were lucky. I mean, it's not that we, we were like way ahead of everybody else. We just like lucky. We're like, why couldn't we do the same thing in, in having a machine understand what happens to a dental conversation between a new patient and a front office? And what prevents the patient from moving forward and not making an appointment? So we deployed uh, our models. We call them machine learning models uh, using this technology called natural language processing. Um, and, and, and really developed something that was never developed before. And it still doesn't exist today, at least in our field, uh, which is the ability to recover a lead that you lost 15 minutes ago. So I'm gonna next slide. I'm gonna show you guys how patient prism really works uh, in a in a dental practice, and we're, we're eventually we'll we'll show some demos as well of how it works. So the idea is a patient uh, a, a patient calls uh, a new patient calls an office. Uh, obviously, behind the scenes, without anybody knowing, we record that call. Well, that technology has been around for a long time. That's easy to do. It's called call tracking and recording. Right? Now, what what we do next is the call gets transcribed. It goes to an AI algorithm. It, it looks at uh, what the patient wanted on the phone. The patient wanted a dental implant, a crown, a bridge, or whatever they might be. And it, it looks at that. It looks at what the fee schedule says, UCR. 
and says, all right, well, the patient wanted a crown, a crown for $1,200. It identifies the value of this appointment is potentially 1200 bucks. Right? Wow. So now we know, okay, if we lose this, what's the cost of losing this patient? It's at least 1200 because they wanted one crown. If it's the implant, it's 5000 Now, um, if the patient doesn't book an appointment, um, the AI analyzes that call based on 13 to 14 different variables, uh, looking like, you know, what, what the were there specials offered? Were you actively listening? Did you were you empathetic? Were you did you ask for the name of the patient? So it's did you offer up like on tone inflection and words? Tone, and even more specifically, like did you offer financing? Did you when the patient had no insurance? And that kind of stuff. And it analyzes all that stuff, it comes up with a score. And then what we did is in order to keep it super relevant, all that data is sent over to a Tampa call center in Florida. And then a, a human being looks at that and and, and makes and, and validates all the data, puts some coaching comments, and here's what you should do. And we send an alert called a reload alert. Within minutes? That. Within about 15 to 20 minutes. Wow. When we started the journey was two hours, about three hours, we're down to 15 minutes now. Incredible. Yesterday, as of yesterday, Mondays are our busiest day, our median reload time was 12 minutes. There's no company on the planet today that comes even remotely close uh, within a few hours. Uh, so the dental practice receives the alerts, and, and, and typically within 20 minutes, we say, because that's the average. Uh, and, and then we give you this alert, and I'm gonna show you what that alert looks like later on. And, and then you call the dental team member, somebody at the office level, calls the patient back. And you, know, you may get maybe 20 alerts a month at the most. So it's not very onerous. And they say, hey, sir, you called us earlier. And then we look at patient prism. And, and that alert also had some training videos on how to call the patient back. And we didn't offer you financing. You know, we have really good all financing through credit, credit or whoever it is. And this could be one ninety nine a month. By the way, all new patients get a free whitening for this month. Come on back. We love new patients. Our doctor is amazing. He's done so and so and so. He's trained at the best institutes. And all of a sudden, a part of those people you call back actually come back. Our, our ratio right now is 30%. It's a big number, right? Now you basically not spend any more money on marketing and acquire 30% of people you've lost only by understanding what went wrong and following back with them very quickly. So, so that's how natural language processing works. This is how we decided to solve the problem of patient acquisition. You're spending money on marketing, driving leads in, have the leads or 40% leads are falling off. And we want to give you that second chance to make the first impression. And that's where... Um, that's the power of AI, to do it at speed and do it accurately. I think it's one thing, too, to have you know, trained people. Uh, but as we know, especially going through COVID, there's been a lot of turnover. Um, and there's naturally with growth, there's going to be new, new team members that get added. And I just see this accelerating that training for someone. You, know, you, you may not have the time yet. It's, they're, they're joining the team at the, the front desk. And right. I, by the way, I want to talk maybe later on about best practices and what it, the impact of taking the phones off the front desk and having dedicated people to this. But to have someone that's fairly new to dentistry, fairly new to, to any dental office's process, I just see this as a support system to help them, you know, just up front on the phones that almost anyone should be able to do this with instructions. It's not that difficult because we put it on a platter for you it's not like you have to log into the system all day. You get an alert, you call the patient back, give them information, we send you training on how to do it.